If you were self-employed or freelanced on a contract basis where no taxes were withheld, you may see some big changes in the tax reporting for this year. All right, so according to the IRS, an individual is an independent contractor if the payer has the right to control or direct only the result of the work and not what will be done and how it will be done. Basically, an independent contractor can be anyone who makes income that is not under a traditional employer-employee relationship. Some common examples include doctors working in private practices, Uber, Lyft, and other rideshare drivers in most states, online resellers, lawyers, bookkeepers, accountants, and freelancers. All right, the 1099 NEC is the first tax form we need to know. If you're self-employed, you can now expect to receive this form from any business that paid you $600 or more for non-employee compensation. Prior to the tax year 2020, if you made over $600 through self-employment, you likely received tax form 1099 MISC. But as of the tax year 2020 and going forward, this type of income is now reported on form 1099 NEC, non-employee compensation. You should receive these forms by January 31st each year. Now, what is non-employee compensation? The IRS states that the business must report payments if they meet the following four conditions. Number one, the payment is made to someone who is not your employee. Number two, the payment is made for services in the course of your trade or business. Number three, the payment is made to an individual, partnership, estate, or in some cases, a corporation. And number four, the payment total is at least $600 for the year. Now, the IRS decided to reintroduce the form 1099 NEC, it was previously used back in 1982, by the way, to simplify the various filing deadlines associated with the form 1099 MISC. As the 1099 NEC only has a single filing deadline, whereas the 1099 MISC has a bunch of various deadlines, it can get really confusing. If you're wondering whether or not these include those Venmo, Zelle, or Square Cash payments you received over the last year, we'll get into that in a little bit. You should not see any personal payments made to you during the tax year on the 1099 NEC. So kind of vaguely, not really. Now, before we get any further, this video is not meant to be tax or legal advice. And we always recommend that you talk to a tax or legal professional before making any decisions for your business. 1099K, what is form 1099K and who receives it? So the 1099K comes from third-party payment services such as PayPal or Venmo for any transfers or payments made over $600. The $600 threshold is an aggregate, meaning that even if different people send you small amounts of money through, let's say, PayPal throughout the year, you'll get a 1099K from PayPal if those payments add up to at least $600. This threshold used to be $20,000 or 200 tra transactions, but was changed under the American Rescue Plan for the tax year 2022 going forward. Receiving a 1099K does not necessarily mean you also owe taxes on that money, and that's key. If your friends reimbursed you for dinner or groceries, that's not taxable income and not meant to be reported as business income. So the 1099K not only includes those Venmo payments, but also reports credit or debit card transactions received through third parties. Online auction payment facilitators and marketplaces that connect independent sellers with customers such as eBay and Etsy, or gig worker platforms like Uber and Lyft, also generally act as third party settlement organizations. You should receive these forms by January 31st each year if you again meet the $600 in gross sales. So let's say that you did $1,000 worth of freelance work for a client during the year. You'll likely need to report that income as business income on your tax return. But you'll have these two documents reflecting the income. At the end of the year, the client is probably going to send you a 1099 NEC showing that it paid you $1,000. But if the client sent you that money using Venmo or a similar platform, you might also get a 1099K for the same $1,000 from the payment network. Don't worry, you won't owe taxes for both forms in this case, but you will want to keep proper records so you do not overlook this type of double reporting. YouTube is a great place to learn all the financial 101 lingo that we never learned in high school and college. I'm here to teach that. Hit subscribe and follow along. All right, the 1099 MISC. Form 1099 MISC, miscellaneous income, reports payments made to others in the course of your trade or business, not including those made to employees or for non-employee compensation. If you are self-employed as a freelancer or independent contractor, you may file and receive 1099 MISC forms, along with 1099 NEC forms, depending on the nature and actions of your trade or business. For the non-employee compensation, you will likely use Form 1099 NEC. You should receive these forms by January 31st. 
If you receive certain payments above certain amounts for your trade or business, unrelated to non-employee compensation for the following items, they will typically be reported to you on Form 1099 MISC. At least $10 in royalties or broker payments in lieu of dividends or taxes and interest. At least $600 in rents, prizes and awards, other income payments, medical and healthcare payments, crop insurance proceeds, cash payments for fish or other aquatic life that you purchase from anyone engaged in the trade or business of catching fish. Didn't know that one. Generally, the cash paid from a national principal contract to an individual, partnership, or estate, payments to an attorney, any fishing boat proceeds. In addition, Form 1099 MISC is used to report direct sales of at least $5,000 of consumer products to a buyer for resale anywhere other than a permanent retail establishment. All right, so the W-2. Form W-2, also known as the Wage and Tax Statement, is the document an employer is required to send to each employee and the IRS in a traditional employer-employee relationship. A W-2 reports employees' annual wages in the amount of taxes withheld from their paychecks, among other items. Now, the W-2 is typically the first form that you use when filing your tax return if you work for a traditional employer. You input your total earnings for the year along with the amount withheld in taxes, all on the W-2. The taxes are separated into withholding for federal income tax, social security tax, and more. If the amount of tax withheld according to the W-2 form is more than what you actually owe after you're done filing, you're issued a refund. If the amount withheld is less than what you actually owe, then you're going to owe the IRS. You should receive your W-2s by the end of January each year. Now the 1040 is the standard IRS form that individual taxpayers use to file their annual income tax returns, where you input the W-2s or any 1099s. This is the form where you disclose your taxable income for the year to determine whether you owe additional taxes or get a tax refund. It's the main form. When you go to TurboTax, H&R Block, or any other tax filing website, you fill out the 1040. They just present it through a series of checklists and questions. As part of that taxable income, you disclose wages, salary, taxable interest, capital gains, pensions, and other types of income. The more complex your tax filing situation, the more boxes on the 1040 that you'll likely complete. Now the 1040 Schedule C is when you start a small business and you do not incorporate your form or form a partnership, you report the results of your operations on Schedule C and file it with your Form 1040. You calculate your self-employment tax on Schedule SE and report that amount in the other taxes section in the Form 1040. In this way, the IRS differentiates the self-employment tax from the income tax. So if you formed an LLC, this is only a state-recognized entity, so this is treated like a sole proprietorship and filed this way as well. The Form 1040 is due by April 15th each year unless you file for an extension or there's some other extraordinary circumstance like there was in 2021. All right, so some other considerations to keep in mind. If you made any income through self-employment, you should consider including this income in your tax return. Keep in mind that reporting income does not mean you are also taxed on that income. There are a ton of deductions you may not even be aware of that would offset that income and therefore result in minimal taxes owed, if any. The self-employment tax. In addition to regular income tax, freelancers are responsible for paying the self-employment tax of 15.3% in 2022. This tax represents the Social Security and Medicare taxes that businesses pay and that employees have taken out of their paychecks automatically. As a self-employed freelancer, you are considered both the employee and the employer. And as the self-employment tax applies to net earnings, which is basically your profit, calculating your net business income is extremely important. So you don't overpay on this one. You're not paying this tax on revenue, you're paying it on net income. Now, there are many valuable tax deductions for freelancers, contractors, and other self-employed people who work for themselves. We have another separate video on this, and we'll link that in the comments but here are a few big self-employment tax deductions to remember. The home office deduction is great if you run your own business from your home or use it as part of your business because you can deduct a portion of your home office expenses. You could also deduct a portion of your mortgage or rent, property taxes, the cost of utilities, repairs and maintenance, and similar expenses. Generally, this deduction is only available to the self-employed, and employees typically cannot take the home office deduction. If you use your car to run your business, such as driving to meet vendors, you could deduct some of those auto expenses from your taxes as well. You can deduct 58.5 cents per mile in 2022 that were used for business purposes. If you might take advantage of this, keep a mileage log throughout the year. Now, if you contribute to a retirement savings account with business income, you could also deduct these contributions from your taxable income. 
Many small business owners use a solo 401k or SEP IRA to save for retirement and offset taxes due each year. For example, you could deduct contributions to a solo 401k of up to $61,000 in 2022, and you can add another 6,500 if you're 50 or older, or 100% of earned income, whichever is less. If you wanna learn more about which type of retirement plan is best for you as a self-employed business owner or freelancer, we'll link that below as well. We got a lot of great stuff for the self-employed freelancer world. And when it comes to taxes, I hope this video was helpful. I'm Tony from Wealthfront. Take care.